Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Electric is Better. Today, we're going to be bypassing our BMS on our stock 60 volt battery uh, that comes on your Suron or your Segway. We just bought the bypass kit from the Emoto Bros. I'll put their link down in the description if you guys want it. They do some really good content here on YouTube, so I'll put their channel down in the description too. Today, we're just going to go step by step on how to bypass your BMS on your battery. There are a couple risks um, to doing this, and I'm going to explain that at the end. There is one thing that is good to know that you cannot, if, even if you bypass your BMS, if you have like a stock controller on your Segway or your Suron, uh, or even an X controller, um, bypassing your BMS won't do anything at all. You have to have an aftermarket controller, uh, Syntec, Nuclear, uh, BAC, 4000, 8000, but you can't do it with the stock Suron or Segway controller. So, But other than that, I'm going to show you the settings of how to set up your controller, how I have my Nuclear set up with the BMS bypass. So with all that in mind, let's get into the video. All right guys, getting started here, we're gonna have to remove the 10 screws around the lid of your battery. I also wanna stress guys that going into this, you are dealing with a live battery pack. There's no way to discharge these cells. So know that going into it, that the battery is still live and you need to be careful. All right guys, once you got all the screws out and loosened, make sure you put them somewhere safe. You're obviously gonna need them to put the battery back together. Right guys, with all those screws loose, you should be able to lift the battery cap right off the actual pack. Right guys, so on the lid, there is an O-ring that goes around all of the screws. Mine actually held in pretty nicely, only the bottom half kind of came out. On my first pack that I did this on, the whole ring fell out. So be careful not to lose it or tear it because it's a watertight seal that goes around the cap. So the only wire we're going to be working on today is the negative wire and these three terminals down here. I'll remind you again that this is a live battery and you guys got to watch where your tools are touching because the whole pack is live so you can't have your tools from the negative side touch the positive or you will have a fire. And I'm just using a flathead screwdriver to get all this putty off the discharge terminal. And I may have to do this to all three of these connections. Next up, we're gonna take our snips and cut the negative black cable at the top. Try and cut the cable as close as you can to that heat shrink that's already on there so you have more slack for your bypass cables. And once again, guys, make sure that you're watching these cords and where they're going. You don't want your cable that you just snip touching the positive end or you're gonna have another fire. After that, I'm gonna take some hot glue and go over the end of the cable that we're not gonna be using, and then I'm gonna wrap it up in electrical tape. It's still gonna be watertight in the case, but I don't want a risk of just the tape coming undone and then touching the positive terminal and then ruining the battery. Next up, we're going to strip the rubber off of our other cable. This is where we're going to hook our bypass wires onto. You can use scissors or pliers. We had actual wire strippers here, so that's what we used. The wire is also not solid, so you're going to have to twist it together to make sure it's not fraying at all. And now we're getting into our Emoto Bros bypass kit, which is pretty neat. Comes with some heat shrink and the actual cables that we're going to need. So we're going to have this end of our bypass wires going into the wire that we stripped and then the other three are going to go down into the terminals that we took all the putty off of. This kind of wire we're going to have to crimp together. But before we do that we're going to cut our heat shrink down to size to make sure it can cover both of the connections because we don't want them hitting the positive terminal and then you're going to put the heat shrink on before you actually crimp the wires together. I believe this is an 8 gauge crimp which is a pretty large crimp but I just used some pliers that I had that actually already had a crimper inside of them and they worked fine. After you crimp your wires together give them a really hard tug to make sure that they're not going to go anywhere. After that step all you have to do is push the heat shrink up over the connections and make sure it doesn't hit the positive wire and normally you use a blowtorch or a lighter for the heat shrink but all we had was matches on hand so that's what we used and it worked fine. It's a little ghetto but it worked out. 
Moving on to the next step guys, we're going to unscrew the three black wires going to the negative side of the battery. Good tip about these screws, they're actually a size 2 screw, so they look a little bit smaller but they're actually a size 2. And one thing to do before you actually unscrewing is check to make sure there's no putty left inside the middle of the screws, otherwise you're not going to be able to get them out and you might strip them. Once you unscrew these little screws, there's going to be a little washer in between the actual connecting and the screw. Make sure you don't lose any of them. Alright guys, we are now ready to connect our BMS bypass to the negative side. The order that this is going to go in is that your new cables are going to go on the very bottom and then your washer and then your screw on top. You're going to want to start with the very back one because it's the most difficult one and it's going to be even harder if you have the other two ones already installed. The same time that you're doing this, be very conscious of where your other three cables are swinging around because you don't want them to hit the positive side. Alright guys, all we have to do now is put some silicone over the top of the connections, that way there's no possible way that these two wires will bump and then there will be a fire. The brand that we're using is called Ultra Copper, which is made for sensors and it is heat resistant, so it's perfect for the build. Just as a reminder guys, I'm going to be putting every single product I'm using in the description down below, so if you guys want to do this, just go down below and check that out. Once we got our silicone on, we're just going to spread it around to make sure it's covering all the connections. And then we are done. All we have to do is wait for it to dry. It's recommended to dry two hours, so we're just going to leave the pack there and let it dry. And then we should be able to come back and put it all back together. Alright guys, so we came back two hours later and the silicone did dry very nicely. Anyway, so since that's dry, it's time to put the battery cap back on. The single hardest thing about doing this is that seal around the perimeter of the lid. It likes to flop around a lot. So I found a way to kind of keep it in place while you're putting the battery cap back on. And that is to put the screws in before you're actually ready to screw it in. Those screws hold that seal in place very nicely while you're putting the cap back on. And it only took me one attempt and the seal was right where it needed to be. So I hope you guys can see what I'm talking about in the video it'll save you a lot of trouble so after you get one of your screws screwed in just holding the cap on go ahead and work your way around and screw all the other ones in making sure that seal doesn't come out anywhere you can see it right here that is in the right position so i'm just going to screw it down also when you're done make sure your screws are just snug you don't want them tight and you definitely don't want to strip them Alright guys, that is it. We just did the BMS bypass on your stock battery. We're going to take it over to the bike and plug it in, make sure it works. Alright guys, this is the end where I tell you about the battery and you have to set up your controller for your battery. So your stock battery has a max output of 100 amps and you have a 67 volt system when it's fully charged, which means you can only pull 7,000 watts out of this battery before you start to damage the cell. So you gotta set your controller to 7,000 watts. And this is why I say you need the aftermarket controller because with the stock controller, you can't control any of that. So we're gonna go into our nuclear controller and change our max power to 7,000 watts. That way we don't damage the cells when we are riding our bike. Another thing that happens when you bypass your BMS, you're going to have to keep on monitoring your voltage on your battery because your discharge rate, the BMS is no longer monitoring it. So for instance, when we're on a ride without the bypass BMS, we have 67 volts on the high end. But when our battery shows that we're at 0%, we still have 52 volts in the pack. And that's because if you discharge past that 52 volts, that's going to damage your cells. So now the BMS won't shut off the bike when you're at that limit of damaging the cells. So you're gonna have to monitor it, which is fine. You just have to pay attention on your screen. It shows you how many volts you have when you're riding. When I have a full charge, I have 67 volts, but I have to pay attention when I get down around 52 volts. 
the bike will still ride, but it's at a huge risk of damaging the cell. So when I get close to 52 volts, I'm gonna have to go change batteries. All right guys, so that's how to bypass the BMS in your Segway or your Chiron. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, again, I'll put the Emoto Bros uh, link for the YouTube channel and how to get the kit in the description. I'll put any tools that I use, like the silicone and stuff in the description too. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.